All right, and welcome back to True Sight TV, where the game turnover rate is possibly higher than anywhere else, as we had about eight seconds in the lobby before the game got started. Complexity up against Root, game number two. Root leading by one, and I'm joined by Dragon Drop Dota. I apologize to everyone for the uh, clackety-clack typing in the first game. Just had some stuff that had to be dealt with. It is done now. We are in the game, head in the game, uh, focused on the game and everything, so... Yeah, great transition, man. Great transition. I'm gonna take over now. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, Dragon uh, Drop. <laughs> I did the transition, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I should mention that." Oh wait, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways. All right. Uh, Preston and draft so far. We once again see a troll and a sniper band out, and a storm split this time around from Root Gaming. So they don't want to play against that once again. Gonna pick because they're gonna uh, pick up a Queen of Pain of their own in the first pick. So. Yeah, uh, up against the storm would be a classic matchup, and yeah, Queen of Pain, very strong hero, very mid game oriented, um, can take it over. Is yeah, and <laughs> is if I'm correct, other heroes can, but Queen of Pain exceptional in that role. The band's kind of going backwards this game a bit. We saw Root; they were on Dire last game, so yeah, they banned out Troll and Sniper, and Complexity banned out Bat and Quap. So of course, Root this time, if they can get their hands on Quap, they know that. Complexity sees it as a threat, they'll pick it on up. Um, they also ban out Ziz's Storm, which was probably one of the most prominent factors keeping Complexity in that game, but hey, if you can have one, you can't have them all. Axe and Skyrath going to be picked up by Complexity. A little interesting to see the Skyrath picked up this early, especially against a hard nuker like Quap, but Axe definitely able to provide lockdown and everything. Yeah, Axe, Skyrath, uh, also very... Um a very popular combination for a good reason. I mean, you have that lockdown, you have that nuke damage, and it's early on in the game as well as later on in the game as well. Uh, they just mesh so well together, and it just, once again, spells early game for complexity. And they have shown in the last game that they know how to make it work. The question is, can they find a transition this time? Can they stop the Queen of Pain in, in her tracks? Uh, can it go into this mid-game and not get behind? All right, uh, Ben's coming out of Shaker for Ben out from Roots Gaming. Omni Knight actually from Complexity, so not quite sure what to make of that. It's normally a niche pick and a niche ban as well. Not really mo the most popular hero, but definitely so a hero that can screw you over royally. <laughs> yeah, um, if you're in the wrong situation, Omni Knight can really just pack a punch in a way, but a way that is kind of a defensive punch. You know what I mean? If you don't have yeah. someone to build a defusal blade, chances are you're going to lose to an Omni Knight. Yep. And yeah, while there are certain defusal carriers that are popular, it doesn't always fit with your strategy if you're not thinking about it, so it can be better just to ban him out. Yep. <clears throat> Especially if you're run also running supports that uh, really want to have other costly items like a Blink Dagger and Aghanim Scepter here in the case of the Witch Doctor. Can't really afford to build a Diffusal Blade on them either, just uh, to deal with the Omni Knight bullshit. So... Um, yeah, or, or Skyrof Mage as well, that wouldn't really benefit from, from a Diffusal Blade. Uh, yeah, j just another one of these cases where I would say, okay, Either they've done some research and they found that Root Gaming runs this hero sometimes, or they just, all right, hey, what's annoying hero that we don't want to play against? Oh, Omni Knight, yeah, he's an asshole, just ban him out. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry to Action Slacks and every, every Omni fan out there. Well, I mean, you can't yeah. blame him, though. Like, yeah. Slacks was one of the ones that brought Omni to the forefront of even the competitive scene as all of a sudden, hey, this hero is really winning games. We should get rid of him. Right, rest of the band's going very slowly here. Oh, Disruptor Ban. We love that. Disruptor actually one of these heroes that I would've, would've li would would like to see picked up more up against Queen of Pain, just to be able to counteract that blink uh, to some degree. I mean, if you still have vision of the Queen of Pain. Yep. Okay. <laughs> People so, trying to get last word in over here, and I'm like, no, stop, we're done. 
This is not the time, Evo. This is not the time. I was about to quit Skype, but then I realized, wait. No. <laughs> no you can't do that. <laughs> that <either>. won't work. <laughs> I'd be really... Uh, it would be really sad. I would probably take it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Revo just left. Not that anyone's hearing this. Ooh, Anyways. You're, dragging, you're talking too much. <laughs> This Juggernaut is, is going to be picked up by complexity. <laughs> by the way, guys, um, we will be casting. I'm going to see if Rupture can join me or if I need to find another co-caster for this evening. Uh, but we will be covering the other one of the JDL games, which I believe is Isaris and somebody. Boreal? Uh, somebody, definitely a great team, yeah. Uh, yeah. Boreal it is, indeed. Isaris yeah, the winner going on to face uh, Leviathan in the next round, so... Should be pretty interesting. That is at three C E S T, so in four and a half hours, give or yep. take. So we will, of course, be taking a break. I'll probably be playing more GTA Five. Just a PSA. Anyways, Complexity getting their hands on the Spin and Win Juggernauts. A decent hero against Queen of Pain, but I, I still. Uh, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, if Queen gets an Orchid. She starts to dominate the matchup very quickly, and <laughs> Queen uh, generally builds an orchid. <laughs> yeah, Queen builds an orchid, and Queen has also, like Lina, uh, an ultimate that goes through any sort of magic immunity anyway, without even needing an Aghanim Scepter for it. I mean, if you get the eggs on top of that as well, it's a 40 second cooldown, which means, hey, super great, and even more damage, of course. So uh, I'm not quite sure about this Juggernaut pick, to be honest. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and pick up right the, here with the death PL, war. though. Yeah, it's a lot of physical damage, a lot of piercing BKB kind of stuff. And Queen of Pain, of course, with the Orchid can just say you have no BKB for you. Yep. And now the fans of Nancy for Root Gaming. So this makes Juggernaut even worse, I would say. I mean, if he tries to Omni Slash during a fight where the Phantom Lancer is anywhere near, there's a good chance that a lot of these balances will end up on Illusions not doing anything. So, ugh. Looks like a, yeah, I mean, Complexity still has some options available to them in terms of how they want to play the game. I mean, Axe and Skyroth kind of set the tone already. Juggernaut really f fits right into that early game aggression kind of thing. Uh, hit, hit them where it's hard before Queen of Pain can really get online, before Phantom Lancer can get to that ridiculous point. And, yeah, still supports like Eventful Spirit available uh, to help you with that. Or, or Zeus, oh. yeah, even more magic burst. It's and a, a good way to figure out, okay, this is the real PL. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. I do like that pickup, uh, and that's basically because of the uh, static field passive, which is going to do 11% of damage to the real PL, but a lot more to the other PLs. So, it's a very quick way to say, look, there he is. They are going to pick up the Viper, though, and against these heroes, that's going to be pretty big. And if I'm rem remembering correctly... There's some interaction with Viper Strike and Blade Fury where I believe Blade Fury doesn't purge the slow. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, because it, it makes sense. The slow does um, go through BKB. Yeah, it does. And yeah, Viper's not going to, to care as much like, up against the magic damage here from Skyrov and Zeus. Uh, if Zeus ends up in mid, that's going to be a horrible matchup for him as well, just because of that, because of Corrosive Skin and all the harassment coming out. Brute Gaming. Seems like they have an answer for everything here, man. Yeah. And uh, this could be a very quick best of three if they really do have those answers. So it'll be interesting to see. They are going to ban out the TA, and I don't think you can blame them for that. However, I don't really see them picking up TA. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, neither. Support PL, of course. You know, the classic. End Kappa. <laughs> yeah, um... You could run Support Viper, but I don't think they're gonna do it. No, no, that, that, that wouldn't make sense if you have Zeus already. If it's, yeah. As it looks right now, it's going to be the mid lane for complexity. Um, Root just making sure that the Shadow Fiend is not gonna be that... Surprise pickup. In any case, that surprise pickup, exactly. Um, Cause he's Zeus, another one Zeus who can clear out support, PL. Right? Yeah. yeah, Zeus can still support... Uh, I'm not too sure what they're going to pick up now. This draft <laughs> yeah. is... The bans, especially in this last phase, really catching me off guard. 
I'm thinking maybe a dazzle here. Some support could be good, can yeah. work well with. Oh. Okay, or brute mother. Uh, yeah. Hello, mommy. I, I like that actually. That's the one thing that <laughs> gives complexity a chance here with the draft that I'm seeing. I would say. Um, that might just be an aggressive trial in with Excar of Zeus, Brute Mother saves Zeus, uh, Excar of Jugger. No, wait. Um, Excar of um, <laughs> Zeus, yeah. With I Jugger solo, it's fine. Uh, I think. And then you could even do the kind of South American strat um, that was actually mentioned over the weekend at MLG of Brood Mid, but they are going to pick up the Pugna. Um. Okay, I was I was thinking of a uh, for the last pick I would, would have thought of maybe more more of a defensive support to help out the witch doctor, especially up against the boot mother. You need something, or or even the axe Skyroth combo of its own. Witch doctor's not going to be able to do too much about that if he gets gone on. Can need some someone else to buffer and Pagna can work in that role, but he he's kind of a very aggressive option, right? I mean. Uh, the one thing he does to help you up against these kind of aggressive moves f coming from an axe or a brute mother um, is to throw out the nether ward and to throw out the the blasts, the nether blasts. Yeah, and also it's the only real AoE they have other than Queen of Pain to clear out their spiderlings. Yeah. And for Quap, it's it's not going to stop the laning presence of Brood. Sure, if Brood goes mid for some stupid reason, they can stop her, but she probably isn't gonna go mid. <laughs> just, just a spoiler alert, guys. Okay, got one AFK for thirty seconds, and then we'll be going. Did see people in the chat saying, "Hey, we got really good, uh, yeah. quick games <laughs> coming up." Boom, boom, boom. We got everyone punctual in the lobby, which is not something that's always the case. So, yeah, more props to that. If you now especially with JDL, this, yeah, if we could now get only get rid of that first. Uh, yeah, that's minute zero pause, so to speak. Well, this is the great. only time we're going to have to really do analysis, Dragon Trap. Because, of course, as soon as we start analyzing something <laughs> when the game's unpaused, boom, team fight, boom, that kill. True, we just missed true. two first bloods and a triple kill. How? We don't even know. <laughs> it's always been the case when we were casting, you're absolutely right. Um, but, yeah. So I can finish my point about the park now. Um, very, very aggressive support, but yeah, as I said, with the spiderlings, you kind of have to have some sort of answer to that. And the Nether Blast is pretty good, which is, you know, which is the reason why Root picked it up ultimately here. They were kind of forced into that kind of offensive pick as a secondary support, as opposed to maybe they would have gotten for that a little bit more of a defensive one, like, uh, like say Rubik, something that gives a little bit more, a little bit more crowd control in the early game up against an axe. So yeah, complexity. Looking to, um, I'm still torn on how they're gonna lane this. Maybe just standard. X. Yeah. I, I, I mean, know. there's so many ways they X could standard? lane it that it's impossible to predict at this point. Yeah. Uh, they do have nothing really telling in the item pickups here. Looks like Brood we'll off lane. We, we, they we did pass our awards, so yeah, we will. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce Root, your victors in the previous game. We've got Phantom Lancer played by Moo. Fluff will be on your Pugna. Jason will be running the Witch Doctor. Guanzo on the Queen of Pain. And last but not least, it's Monkeys Forever on the Viper. And now for complexity in the offlane, it's going to be Z Freak on the Brood Mother. So I'm probably going to stay there all alone for the entire game, probably. So in the melons, taking the Zeus to the middle lane, so standard there, and which makes it a defensive tri lane for now. With Fly on the axe, Zizu playing the Sky of Mage support, and Zizi on the Juggernaut. Now yeah. I say tri lane, Fly will probably spend a lot of his time in the jungle. Oh, they spotted. Coming around. Ward going out, actually. They're they're anticipating the Skyrath jungle potential. Or the axe jungle, excuse what? me. <laughs> Skyrath <Skyrath's> jungle? <laughs> yeah, <What>? classic <laughs> Skyrath jungle, you know? <laughs> You get all every the creeps single, grouped every up. Every pop game, man. You, you get a big stack, and hate. then you go over with your Mystic Flare, and realize it doesn't affect creeps at all, so... <laughs> then your carry comes and farms it, and... Yeah. Hello, Revo. A little well, one-for-one rune trade here, it seems. So... Root Mother with the early star down in the bottom. No first blood just yet. 
It's only a matter of time. Probably once you start talking about something yeah. else, that's when the first blood's gonna come. But. So I'm staying quiet right now. It's like, okay. The <laughs> first right, blood's gonna talk. hear us. Don't it's talk. gonna get us. <laughs> Silencer would be very pleased with this cast so far. As, of course, um, we are True Sight TV. Uh, I'm SP Revolution 5. This is Dragon Drop Dota. And we are your casters today. And Fluff is just. <laughs> no camp for you! <laughs> that's his job right now, as. He's come, he's actually put a sentry up in this camp, and Skyrath is going to run into him. Now, Pugna is a good hero against Skyrath, but in the early game, Pugna will lose to Skyrath. I mean, you're not going to get much there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, they do have the Witch Doctor here as well, though, and once he hits level 2, he's going to have that Hood Restoration, which can help them out a bit, but until then, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. Pugna, notorious for being super squishy. Has to be careful about these kind of rotations. You can't really do that, do too much of those. But yeah, yeah, if you take a look at his stats, you see he's got four in gain, one point two strength gain. He spends a lot of time on the books, not a lot of time at the gym. So yeah. let's plug it in a nutshell for you. But yeah, um, what, what do you think about this aggression here coming out from Roots? I really like the fact that they're putting PL in an aggressive tri lane, especially if they can get him up a quick Basilius. He hasn't had to use any mana yet, which is really good early on. Because he'll be able to do a lot of physical damage to the Jug in the mid-game. He can also just keep Jug away with the Spirit Lance. Also, they can slow down Skyrath, and they may be getting a kill right about now. Of uh, Nether Blast does miss, but they still will secure it. Jason, picking up the first blood for Root with that Witch Doctor. Very nicely played there. Very good. Yeah, very nicely timed out as well. Just barely had enough damage with the right here coming out from... Uh, from the Witch Doctor, and yeah, what you said in the last game holds true here, of course. Pretty hefty here, 58 base damage. Now Fluff will run right into Fly here. here, who did pick up Battle Hunger. A little bit of an interesting pick up here, and actually Swindle on the mid lane. Could be going down to Guanzo. Guanzo diving tower will be able to blink away and not get killed by that. Did have a haste rune to work with there. Most of his mana was expended, but that's going to be very useful. And they are blocking the pull through camp as well, although... I believe they're a bit unhappy now that they see that there's no tri lane down here. So, yeah. just a really good read for for Root here, and not really anticipated for from complexity the way they uh, they're up against it here. They yeah. haven't had any sentries to deward uh, the jungle camp here as well in the mid, which makes uh, the axe jungle that much less efficient as well. The only and thing that's going okay for them still here, I would have said, is the off lane because you freak on Brute Mother and. Super annoying to deal with, but once yeah. uh, once Guanzo gets a couple of levels into the Scream of Pain, he should be able to deal with Spiderlings, which makes it, which is interesting because he has two points up in the shadows right now. Yeah, it's more of a I'm scared you're gonna jump me build, so I'm gonna keep you slow forever. The problem I have with this is that Dagger is just joined by invisibility, Scream is not. So yeah. if you if Brood's in the AoE for the Scream, you hit her. If she's in the AoE for the Dagger, you might hit her. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just Guanzo's uh, thinking a step ahead. Just thinking that, hey, probably won't be able to kill me anyway because of the blink. Yeah. So I'll just get what I can here and then set up for any sort of rotations. I mean, he, he got a lucky haste rune just before, which is which was probably the trigger for him to go to the middle lane in the first place. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see him rotate around uh, as soon as you got what he wants here in this off in this bottom lane. The other problem is it can dis delay your points in your blink, which you definitely need to upgrade. He will put out a scream level two, drops those spider links to about half health, but not quite enough, and he will back up and have to bottle up behind the tower as well. Does have a ring of Basilius though to help him sustain too. So that'll be quite nice. Zeus picking up boots does have a uh, double damage. I could have sworn there was an invis on someone. Maybe I'm just crazy. Confirmed. Uh, okay. Yes. Confirmed. And they are also yep. blocking off this hard camp up top so Juggernaut can't farm it with spin. Which, that's going to hurt him a lot. He hasn't been under a lot of harass yet, so he hasn't leveled Healing Ward. But he, he's going to be soon. He's just zoned out of last hits and experience. He's got 10 last hits right now, and that is not looking great. Yep. I mean... <laughs> Phantom Lance are right up there here at the top of the last hit charge yeah. with only his teammates there to contend with even. And, and all of them have lane. about 25 each, so they're getting good farm. Uh, looking at if they keep this up, uh, 50 at 10 minutes, which is great. 
Uh, it's not spectacular, but it works, definitely. Skyrath actually going to move in toward the mid lane on Monkeys, who does have three points up in Corrosive Skin. So, looking for more of a I need to live longer build, and especially up against this much magic damage, it makes sense. But generally, you want to go for that Nether Toxin build so you can take advantage of the squishiness of these heroes. However, if you're squishy yourself, they can nuke you down faster than you can right click, basically. Yep. Ah, uh, flying Zizou. Maybe looking for a rotation. There's no smoke, though. I guess Forever might still be in trouble here. Uh... Oh, no Zeus ult yet. They actually will throw out the cask, which will bounce to Zizou and then to Creeps, which will keep the heroes safe for now. I call on Axe, just bringing the Creeps up to the high ground a bit. And... Yeah. I... They had smoke there, sure. they might have gotten the kill, because they that's just that much extra, extra space that you gain. But yeah, the, it just seems like complexity is not it's not coordinating well enough at, in this game as they have been in a lot have been able to in the last. The rotations are not on point. Maybe it's a little bit of tilt. Maybe it's a little bit of um, yeah, a little bit of the stand-in factor coming into play. <laughs> Who knows? Just seems like they're being shut down on every single lane, apart from Zeefrig. I mean, he's he's doing his own thing down here in the bottom, and he's gonna have to do a lot of work if he wants to carry complexity through here. Yeah, now, he does need to start taking this tower, but it's gonna be quite a trial with Queen of Pain here, who does now have three points up in the scream and an ult up, so there's kill potential on Zeefrig if he can see Zeefrig. However, Zeefrig does have two sentries, so as soon as Quap puts anything down in terms of a sentry, not that she has it, Zeefrig is going to be able to get rid of that very quickly, so. Yep. There's a TP of Zeus coming back into the mid lane now. Monkeys Forever is working on a mech, and I think against Zeus, again, an early mech is going to help you out a lot. I would have loved to see that last game. Still, and uh, in the jungle, we got Jason in a lot of trouble. Fly will get the call off. Not spinning yet. We'll get stunned. Oh, oh if he had a win. dunk, they'll get him. And Zeus just coming in with the BM kill steal. <laughs> well, he, well, he kind of had to. They knew that that oh, was good. about to join <laughs> yeah. the fight. Right? But that's that, that Zeus moment of, oh, good, you guys are about to get a kill. Be a shame if someone, you know, pressed R. <laughs> well, sorry, oh, but a wraparound. This is bad. Fluff is in a lot of trouble. He will decrepify the Axe so the Axe can't attack him, and he, of course, can't attack Axe even if Axe were to call. But Pugna will still go down. Wish Doctor getting silenced, and then Juggernaut ult will help finish off Jason. A spin to really finish the job. Moo at least getting a kill there on the Axe, and now it needs to be on the run. They're pinging it out. They think it's real. But Moo's like, oh no. It's not. And Guanzo just gets here at the perfect time to throw out the ult and the scream just to finish the jug off. But they do get some much-needed gold off of that, and that's pretty big for Complexity, seeing as they also got enough space for Brood to finish up her Midas at 8 minutes and take the tower. And for a Brood Mother, usually you see someone go Boots and then Midas. This is a Midas first that's going to really allow her to skyrocket in terms of form. Uh, when do you ever see Boots and a Brood Mother? I'm, co I'm confused. Uh, well, when I've seen it, it's been Boots into Midas. I may be completely wrong about that, and I apologize if I am. Uh, it's it's usually uh, soldering into Midas, into Necrobook, okay. into whatever you want. So or you're the I mean, Dagon Blade route. If you look at movement speed right now, or Dagon Blade, yeah. If yeah. you look at the movement speed right now, 501 in, in webs, and Guanzo actually has to blink away. Yeah. You, do, you don't need boots in Root Mother. Not at all. Unt until later, one, if you want, want, to, uh, want to have the teleport. Yeah. The boots of travel. I mean, I I still say if you're going to get boots, you just go brown boots. Oh, top lane. Oh. Ooh, whoa. Finally, overstay the okay? welcome. He has to go back now. <laughs> the other thing is the Skyrath silence is going to be devastating for PL. He, I mean, you can't doppelganger away from it. You want to just purge it off? Well, you're going to have to use a defusal charge, which may end up costing you a kill on someone. See, Freak's yep. still staying away from him here. Uh, until you get your mantle style, of course. I mean, we'll we'll see what move wants to go for first. He, he has a Rope of the Magi, so that might hint towards either Treads, you can make them with those, or just a Diffusal first, so to speak. I'd, I'd like to see the Diffusal first, to be honest. I think um, getting a Diffusal against Jug, for one thing, is really just going to be strong. It's going to let him burn Jug's mana when Jug doesn't have mana. Well, 
Dark doesn't have much of anything. His BKB is literally useless because it can't be cast. Now, Mu will get slowed almost, but a nice disjoint there. They will run him down, though. And the seal coming out, they will take him down. Yep. Omni Slash used there, but he... Well, he does lose some gold there. Doesn't even buy out. He'll be okay, though. He'll, he'll make it back into this game. Now... That was, that was a really important kill there from, uh, for Complexity. That did allow Juggernaut to start catching up a little bit. It kind of shoes Mu away from the lane now. I mean, he's been yeah. a little bit cocky being there, staying up there all alone, without any sort of support. Is that has, uh, as both Jason as well as uh, Fluff have been rotating Oh dear. Out. And Fluff is going to get a little bit of vision onto Fly. However, Fly is going to be just fine. Mu coming in now. I think they know Jug is nearby. They're going to get the slow off onto him. Trying to bait out the spin there, which would have let them go in for a bigger kill right behind it if he were to spin, but he's not taking it. He, he's smarter than the average Jug over here. Yep. This ain't your pub or not. <laughs> well, oh, but a big team fight made brew. As the supports are rotating in, a spin coming out from Jug forces PL to use the doppelganger on cooldown for about 10 more seconds. Okay, they're gonna abandon now. Yeah. Probably saw the Viper leaving main, maybe. The big thing is, they're trying to get Pugna this tower. And they have an outstanding push lineup. I mean, you hear people talk about how PL's not the pusher he once was. Yeah. Sure. But Viper... Viper's Nether Toxin still works against towers, even if it's only 50% of the damage. That's still potentially 80 bonus damage on towers. Pugna still works against towers just fine. In fact, that's probably the best thing Pugna does. Mm, yeah, arguably. In Yeah, other than kill squishy nukers with high mana costs, but... It's, oh. it's a lot easier to pull off the tower push, because all you gotta do is walk up to the tower and queue and click. But there's your Dagon from Brood, and... I do like this pickup simply because there's Pugna on the enemy team. <laughs> He's squishy <laughs> as can be. Like I yeah. said, he hits the books. He doesn't hit the weights. Yeah, absolutely. And and Zifrik also recognizing that um, that he has to come fight sooner rather than later here because yeah. with the mechanism up and running, uh, Root is going to be uh, feeling very safe pushing these towers here. Just and that's soon, just what uh, they'll do. Using that nether blast. And there's not a whole lot that Complexity can do about it just yet. I mean, sure, it's cute. Your glyph gets refreshed. We'll take another tower. We'll make sure all your refreshed glyphs, except for the last one, are used on your own towers. And sooner or later, we'll be at your front door. The problem with this lineup is, do they have the high ground potential? They don't have a place to hide that nether ward very well leading up to the dire high ground. Yeah, yeah, that's true, but... Sometimes it's just enough to guard them with your bodies. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the nether words behind me, you can't see it. <laughs> well, you can see it, but you can't really go for it. Here's monkeys forever. Looking to for swindle melons? We'll get out, barely. Uh, where are we? Okay, there we go. Nope. Oh, Actually, ult oh, coming out on Guanzo. And it's a good thing Swindle lived through that. Otherwise, wouldn't have found that kill in the Queen of Pain. And Z Freak in a way, actually has kind of a double Midas here. The um, regular Midas, of course, for creeps. And then you've got the Dagon for heroes. Which, the Pugna, the Queen of Pain, the Witch Doctor, even, they're very squishy. They're going to be able to fall very quickly to that. Uh, Quop is going for a Yules. And this is an item pickup I'm seeing semi-often. But I'm not exactly understanding, to be honest. And Ziz is going to get hit by that ult from the Witch Doctor. Monkey's diving behind tower. Can he finish him off in time? One... Oh. oh, I was thinking one more hit would do the job, but he actually, I believe, was not using his poison attack, unless he was uh, orb casting it. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that would have been enough damage either. It may not have, but Maybe. at that point, you got to try anything. Now, Fly will get the jump on Fluff, who does kill off Skyrath with that uh, help of Queen of Pain, but the Nether were doing most of the work there. Probably getting a really good ult off, though. Convincing the team they have to back up and they can't re-engage except for Swindle who is actually gonna Jump right into Queen of Pain <laughs> Not sure what that we'll blink was, but Queen of Pain was uh, yeah. a little bit. No, it has to jump away. Quam so does have the Yule's done now. He gave a, he gave a uh, butter charge over to Z-Freak as he would have timed out for um, Time now to the uh, what Oh, no <laughs> the She was in the fountain too <laughs> 
Oh Most my gosh. Most way to die up against a zoo. There you have it, folks. And that's as Midas picked up. So, a little behind, but he does have those arcane boots at least, which is going to let him build into the bloodstone. In fact, he'll only be about 3k away from that right now. So, he'll be able to get that bloodstone up very quickly, and it'll help out quite a bit. Yep. Right, this game already looking a little bit better for complexity than the last game. I mean, if you look at the net worth dis distribution, there's, there's a little bit of a similar picture with Z-Freak on top, and then three heroes for roots. Um, but Z-Freak is on the Brute Mother's... Pr it's probably one of the heroes that can make more of it, I would say, in terms of uh, getting stuff done across the map. If it's just for to pushing towers and maybe picking off the single support here and there, it dares to roam into the webs. Mm -hmm. We even Guanzo here with the help of Fly. Goodbye, Guanzo. Yeah, we did see. Also, can you, I don't think that he can blink. Wait. Away. Oh, oh wow! What? Wait, is that bottom lane? Because I'm watching top. Ziz <laughs> is gonna get almost dead. No, and they didn't have a maledict on him. Not that it necessarily would have killed him, but actually, there's no points in maledict at all. So it's the very push base sustain build here coming out on the witch doctor, which I still feel the value point in maledict is really good. Yeah. Is this one or the other one the PPD build? Uh, Wasn't that PPD one point into Voodoo Restoration and then Max? Yeah, Life? I think that might be it. I think so. But yeah, anyway, in the bottom lane, they almost got Guanzo there, but he was able to use and then blink away right after, which I didn't think he was going to be able to do. Because he, he, I think he wasn't done range, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah. Fly was, he was just standing a little bit too far after you, but there we go, blinking and once again gets monkeys forever. Oh, but the nether ward again, it does enough damage for Queen of Pain to finish off the Zeus and help finish off the Skyrath. That's three dead for complexity now. Ziz under fire and in a lot of trouble, there's the PL to finish him off. Nice uh, movement there with the doppelganger, just realizing this is probably where he'll end his spin. Let's just go over there and wait for him. Very nicely played here. But apart from Fluff, had a little bit of blunder there. Decrupified, uh, decrupified monkeys forever, and then Mystic Flare from Skywalker just finished them off. But yeah. Meanwhile, uh, the Brood, Mama's coming in, boys, and she has got a level three Dagon, along with 400 in the bank. She's literally taken over the jungle. We need to call an exterminator to get rid of Brood. Well, I'm afraid that exterminator is probably going to get killed. That's the problem. This is... It's not your regular pest control problem. The exterminator is actually not as much of a threat to the spider as the spider is to it. Yeah, it looks like they are teaming up, though, to do that extermination job here. Do they have any sort of detection? That's the next question that I have to ask. They have a smoke. Look like it for now. Wait, they had dust. Oh, they have dust. Uh, okay, yeah. They, have dust okay. Never mind. they were just swapping around inventory slots or something. I don't know. PL, meanwhile, finding himself a double damage rune, and he'll be able to take down this ancient camp. He actually did end up going for Drum into Morbid Mask and Yasha. Uh, not sure if that's a Vlad's yet. It may just be a casual oh, mask. Meanwhile, though, Jug trying to make something happen with the Roche Pit, and they actually realize people are smoked up. They're going to slow down Ziz. Monkeys forever. Slowed in turn. Uh, never mind. That was the old brood. A very old brood. Like from years ago. Right, so at least they stopped the Roshan attempt here, just chasing them yep. out. And didn't quite have enough damage to finish it off quickly, so they had to count it on the stealth, the stealth element. They might just be able to, you know, shifting their focus here. I love Z Freak's movement, though. He knows there's someone over here. He knows he can just sit there and leech X XP, and actually he's going to get his Midas here. Oh, okay. He hit it with the nuke and then used the um, Midas to kill it. And actually, they're going to find the courier. Axe actually going to come in. Moo is going to get dunked. I believe he should have seen that coming, but it's a little hard to do or respond that quickly, even with Doppelganger off cooldown. They're going to repel uh, the push on the top tower, though. Yeah. Fluff. All dust coming off on the bot lane, though. Z-Freak, he throws the Dagon, does at least find the kill on Witch Doctor, and Z-Freak... He doesn't have Maledix on him, but he does have that uh, dagger in his back. And Ziz isn't going to finish off Queen of Pain. Queen will be able to blink away. Is going for the Aghanim Scepter now to really be able to cut through that spin anytime he needs to. Sorry to interrupt you there, Dragon Drop. 
Yeah, no problem, man. <laughs> Didn't even see that fight. I mean, whenever there's a fight, it seems to be there seems to be another fight on the other side of the map as well. So, um, yeah. Um, I was just gonna mention that a value point into life drain from Pragna could have probably secured him the Skyroth kill there. But yeah, it's it's not a big the biggest deal in the world. Yep, and sorry for not changing our net worth a bit sooner, guys. I honestly had forgotten all about net worth. Not important, you know. There's so much push going on in this game that <laughs> it almost feels like a, a gold XP. What is is that a thing? It's all about uh, towers. It is. It is. Yeah, of course. Mostly. Uh, if, if you, you can actually take a quick look at, an, at the charts as well, and you will see that Root has barely more than 2,000 for gold lead, but complexity actually had in terms of experience. And I'd say experience um, is a little more valuable in this game for everyone. Uh, well, you right really there. need that. Well, I'm not quite sure what he was doing there, but he found himself a scar off the kill. Yeah, so and was able to TP him. down to the team, and they're going to smoke up right now. Oh, send that courier home, yeah. And they won't have to go very far to find the kill. Brute is actually going to be their target, it looks like. And they will dust her up. So, Z Freak in a lot of trouble. The big news coming out. And Pugna just to suck her off and finish the job. Spiling's but now, yep. <laughs> and Pugna isn't able to kill those in one go. Now, Jason will be able to heal him up. He's got another blast and should be able to farm him up now. At least a couple of them. However, the big thing here for Brute is the fact that they will get a Roche off of this. And PL should be able to drop his Quelling Blade and pick that up. They could also just give it over to the Viper, though. However, Axon Sizu nearby. Fluff, he places down the Nether Ward on the high ground. Nicely done there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that should... <laughs> he even yeah, pinged it like, look, twice. guys. Look, I did this. Oh, they're but going there... to go in. And Viper pop bottles an Invis rune. And actually, Axe gets the Aegis. The Dire gets the kill. Quop managing to get the Sonic Wave off. Axe coming back in a moment. Swindle gonna go down. No ult up for him because uh, he had just used it. But Ziz in a lot of trouble. Has to head home. Fly now under fire and Boo on the run. They'll get a double kill as Root managed to get a lot out of that fight even without having the Aegis in their hands or the kill on Roche. That was a big gamut for complexity, and I want to say that it was worth it at the end, even though they have to, they still have to pay two heroes. I mean, they do get the kill as well. It wasn't even the snap. Uh, wait. Just, uh, they have some spidings in there as well, so maybe that it helps. I don't know. Just what is this well building? At, at least it helped with the vision, right? Just giving Fly the uh, opportunity to blink in at the right time. Very well played there, and it does mean that there's no Aegis on route. That means that they're gonna feel a little bit more squeamish about moving in too deep here. Yeah. I'm curious about this Claymore, though. Is this... It could be Battle Fury for the PL. Uh, run? I, he's, yeah. Jug has a Claymore. It... Yeah, you, you said PL, and now we said Dragonaut? Dragonaut has Claymore, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's a Battle Fury for the PL. Sorry. Uh, I'm confused. I now. guess. I'm, I'm, it's either got to be Battle Fury or Shadow Blade, or random casual Claymore, which is not usually <laughs> a thing. Yeah, Battle Fury is uh, something that you can... Oh, but the taunt, much, but Monkey's yeah. Forever's dead. Something that you can get on Dragonaut if you want to... Um, if you don't have a Midas, don't want to get a Midas and want to expedite your farm a little bit. And also, of course, it also works very well if, you, if you, the enemies are hap happen to cluster up a little bit. And, of course, with the Axe already on your team, able to capitalize on that and keep them that way for a couple of seconds. Yeah, might not be the worst decision here to go for a battle fury. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, PL, uh, what was he gonna go for? He's sitting at 10,000 net worth, has a bit of troubles now, so on top of the Helm of the Dominate and Yasha, so no really big items just yet. Otherwise, normally you would expect a Phantom Lancer to have uh, finished up the Diffuse Law Mantra by now, but he's opting for a little bit of a more more broad build, so to speak. And yeah, it's working out for them. He's been doing a good job with his, uh, with his doppelgangers. Yeah. Using them at just the right time. I mean, he dunked he dunked a an axe dunk there in the Roche pit in that last fight, which is what kept them alive and got them the kill. Speaking of axes, he's gonna get, eat some harassment. Force the TPR, gun cancel it. Can they? Yeah, can they turn this into something? There's still an ultimate available for Jason here. Oh, yeah, and he'll use it. Oh, oh 
Quanzo's like, no, I want to use my ult. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has an axe. It's not really a big deal. It's only yeah, four of course. seconds on the cooldown. The only thing he's lacking at this point is the regen. Um, yeah. Which... Yeah, that's true. I mean, he'll be okay, though. They do have... Nine mana regen with the Yules. I mean, the Yules is providing him enough regen, I guess. I'd still like to see a bottle, but that's just personal for me. Uh, Zeus will actually be picking up a Yules of his own here. I was assuming he would go for something like a Bloodstone, but that's not going to be the case. Yules Gaming, welcome to 6.83. Please, dear God, get rid of it. 6.84, Volvo. What? Now. No. That would, that would... You know how many jugs, or how many pubs I've played against Jug, Troll, and Sniper? Well... You were talking. We were talking about Yule Scepter. And we were talking about getting rid of the Yule Scepter. You know how many and pubs I've played without Yule Scepter. Do you know how many murders <laughs> it would it would cause? I mean, I guess so. But Valve offices. Possibly, they're probably okay. just farming MMR with Jug and Troll. That's why they won't change it yet. <laughs> I'm not saying anything against the Jug Troll matter. I mean, uh, against how oh, it's a little bit boring. And, but then again, it's it's every single meta. I mean, there was there was a post on Reddit once about uh, about the circle of Dota. And yeah. It's well, it's well oh. nice ultimate here from Jason. And Z Freak will actually disjoint the thing, but meanwhile, Pugna takes down Sky on the bot lane, takes down the tower as well. He's got himself an Ags, and uh, he's becoming his own little miniature core at this point. Yep. It's In fact, they all are. <laughs> that's the only, uh, yeah. That's that's the only time we can say, "Hey, Fluff can start sucking now." All yeah, the he's, time. He's literally the only hero that gets good when he's able to start yeah. sucking. <laughs> oh, nice movement from Fluff! Isn't enough time. And actually, is he? Okay, I thought he was gonna start running from the base. Like, wait for me, Axe. I will come to you. <laughs> I've always loved you, Axe. But no. The space but in between yeah, um, them was too great. There was this post on Reddit, uh, the Circle of Dota, where people basically yeah. start complaining about. Uh, I think the beginning was, "Hey, yeah, new patch, everything's great," <laughs> and then, "Oh my God, the meta sucks," and then, "Okay, new new patch again." But then there there's the other part of that they miss the, the thing where you're in the restaurant and it's like, "Ice farm, this patch is shit. I will never play again." Oh, <laughs> oh wait, I'll come back. And meanwhile, we see Brew just getting blown up. I mean, a, li a little bit funny because they uh, he uh, <laughs> Guanzo used the sonic wave just when uh, yeah. he got yields up into the air. On so the bright side, the though, he got the spiderlings, so he at least gets a whole lot of gold for it. <laughs> and again, it's only on a forty-second cooldown. This is I still yeah. am baffled when people say, "Well, Otis isn't a good item on Quap." It's it's not. I'm sorry, you don't want a 490 dude? early enough, it's, yeah. it's really good. I mean, if you're... it's If it's your first item and you get it at 40 minutes, you've probably lost. Let me just go ahead and say it. But if you get it in a reasonable timing, it's a great item for Quap. They are going to be TPing back now with the Zeus. Uh, Axe, not responding yet. There's Jug. He comes back, though, instantly getting slowed. He will pop the ult, though, to get rid of some of that. And actually, they're all dropping low, but they're going to... Perform a blood infusion onto monkeys forever, and he's staying out of dunk range. Flying now extremely slowed, and actually gonna get hit with the Witch Doctor ulti as well. Lots of buybacks coming out for complexity once again. And Fluff just gonna say, I give you my life. Here. Yep. Just very good target fire here from Root, and not enough uh, for complexity. I mean, the Spirit are just enough. Uh, they clustered up enough oh. for the Juggernaut. Oh. So he's getting hit with lots of things. <laughs> And so we'll actually end up falling. Actually, whoa, li in a little bit of trouble. He does get Dagon down, but the rest of the team still alive, barely though. So <laughs> they can't really finish off the tower now. And the great thing is, they have this urn be. on Witch Doctor, so Pugna can just say, "Here, take my energy. I give you my energy, Spirit Bomb on Viper." And <laughs> Witch Doctor's like, "Don't worry, man. I got you." Uh, they, w they weren't chasing it. Wow. Complexity, no, no fear. At least they realize they sh need to get even more out of this if they want to get back into this game. And Monkey Spur with no teleport scroll. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be in a bit of trouble. He will so have enough mana for it, and he yeah, will he should be right. back up. Ah, okay. If Jug had gotten in there for a hit and been able to crit him, I think he would have killed him. And honestly, Phase Boots would have made the difference because he would have been able to move through the brood.
Yep. Mama too fat, though. Can't get around her. They do have a gym now up on Viper. <laughs> Sorry, they did a little switcheroo as soon as I noticed it, but... So they will be able to see the brood a lot easier now, although that does not mean they will be able to catch her. I don't always know. But it's, it's, it definitely helps. Can't just get caught out by, uh, by Broodmother just prowling through, prowling through the webs. Just gives you the initiative and just, just the existence of the gem means that Zifri can't play like he wants to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the time for that is, is kind of done here, 30 minutes in, as the Broodmother anyway, so. I'm gonna smoke up, it will be scaled out by the Spiderlings, I believe. If you watch yeah. that, so a lot of, lots brood, of things come out. Brood's just like, I'm in the trees. Yeah. I believe may have popped the smoke oh, on PL, lane. but mid lane fluff. In a little bit of trouble, he will slowly attack Axe down. Decrepify, oh. though, coming in, and a ton of damage. Guanzo now beyond godlike, pops a BKB and uses herself in the air to escape the jug. Another suck coming off for Fluff, but he'll just try it again in a second here. Zizu in a lot of trouble as he gets taken down, and that's three heroes dead for nothing lost by your Radiant team. Brood is still trying to rat it out, though, as is Zeus, of all people. Yep. At this point, Root's just leveraging their, their enormous uh, gold advantage here. Just Guanza on Monkeys Forever here. Uh, I'm not even sure if Monkeys Forever did a whole lot in that fight. It was Root just Guanza plus a little bit of extra magic damage here from uh, from the Decrepify. And then Axe just melted. And after that, even the right clicks from Guanza were super strong. We saw how how much damage the Juggernaut took just from that. And yeah, then, but meanwhile, yeah, a base and race. On top of that, Fluff just sucking around. Oh, Z-Free. He will make uh, it out. What? But not after doing a lot of damage to the tower. Meanwhile, though, the mid racks, half of it goes down. They're just going to leave the range racks. Who needs it? Let's take another melee. Let's put our advantage for So Brood's going to have a really hard time pushing, at least they hope. Now, that may not end up being the case. As actually Fly comes in with a nice call on two or three, at least, and a lot of illusions. But his mana getting burnt, he won't be long for this world. He's able to buy back, and he is going to do it. They do hit both racks with the Pugna Nether Blast now. And PL able to take one down. Root now. Guanzo. God, like as he takes down the Zeus, who did have an ult, but no mana to use it. And they do take a full two racks off of that push. Yep. That's just the strength of the Pagna as well. I mean, that Nether Wolf, once again, sniped off the Skyrath. Uh, and that engagement as well. Uh, plus the heal, plus everything. Everything's just gelling so nicely for Root, which... Um... Kind of comes back to the draft a little bit as well. I mean, they, they just have such a strong draft and complexity. A little bit flimsy up against up against everything here in Laken now. They, I mean, they had this early game, a little bit of an early game strength. Oh my gosh! But they weren't really able to capitalize on it on it in this game. And Pugna yeah. is continually evolving into the fourth core now that yeah. he's uh, ahead of Swindle Melons in terms of farm. Who I, I will remind you is the team's mid who had a Midas. Uh, they just it didn't work out for him and fluff now putting his little nether ward up in the secret spot Normally you don't want a ward there, but he does Wanzo <laughs> well, also playing a little bit of mobile ward here it seems Yeah, he's not really needed for the Roche attempt, but there is a five-man smoke coming out They're gonna send an illusion, but they, they're smarter than the average team complexity They know and fly with the blink in the call. It's not early enough to take the Aegis this time Quap actually with an ult off, and they'll start to fall. Zeus ult comes out, almost takes down the Pugna. Actually, he does end up falling over here somewhere. Buys back into the game now. As Skyrath ult does go down, only two heroes remain here. And Z-Freak, well, I hope he realizes Viper has this gym. Because if he doesn't, <laughs> he's it's going to be bad news for him. He's going to slip into the pit and then get wrecked, possibly. He's still going to try to go for it, though. Nope, they saw him. He can't get off the cliff. Oh, dear. He is Dunzo. Indeed. A Z Freak will Dunzo, fall. He does Dunzo have... Dunzo wasn't even helping it, but yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> four heroes down. Age is down. Only oh, and meanwhile, PL's in the base. Yeah. Bottom lane pushing in. Everything just going from bad to worse. If in complexity. Not, not really a whole lot to talk about it. Not, not really yeah. a whole lot to say about it. I mean, the... The decision was good, the play was good to just smoke up and go contest with Roshan. Because they knew that with that Aegis, there's no, absolutely no way they could have stopped any sort of push. But yeah, yeah. At, th at this point... Oh, in a hex. 2k net worth, move 17k net worth. This is your hard carry clock now. Yeah. 
too much levels, too much gold on these heroes to feasibly take a, take a five on five engagement here. Yeah, and uh, it looks like it is going to go the way of Root. GG will be called by Ziz here. And it, yeah, I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles at this point. Well, that ancient definitely is crumbling here, falling into the into hellfire. It seems like. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Root take it to zero here. Very convincing. Very, very good showing here of them as a team. Uh, looked a little bit flimsy in the start of game one, but have been able to pull back, and ultimately made uh, had the better late game plan, better late game decision making. Yeah. Anyways, that's going to be it. Root Gaming moving on complexity. Eliminated from the Join Dota League for now. I'm not sure what their fate is at this point, though. Uh, uh, for complexity, it should be Division 2. These are Division 1, 2 playoffs. Um, JDL number 5, that? America playoffs. That's, that's all I've got right now. Uh, division so 1 to 2, yes. Yeah. So complexity yeah. will be moving down to Division 2, it looks like, unfortunately. But... They, they fought hard, it just their drafts didn't work out right, and uh, Root Gaming looking very strong, especially after taking down Wheel last night, so. It'll be very interesting, of course, guys, at, I believe, 8.30 this evening? Yeah, I'm trying to get the Eastern time right, let me see. 3 hours, 41 minutes. 3 hours is 8, 41 minutes is 9. 9 p.m. this evening, I'll be bringing you Isris Gaming versus Boreal. I'll have some kind of co-caster. I don't know who. We'll figure it out. <laughs> some kind of co-caster. I think Rupture's busy with Butterfly tonight, so... At the end of the day, it's just going to be a soundboard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, uh, I am co-caster bot 3000. I will co-cast. Look at the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> Report co-caster robot shows no emotion. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the cast, make sure you hit us up on uh, Facebook at TrueSight TV, Twitter at TrueSight TV, Twitch at TrueSight TV, Hitbox at TrueSight TV. We're working on the MySpace and the Tinder and everything else. Um, of course, I'm SB Revolution 5 joined by Drag and Drop Dota. You can find us on Twitter under those names and also, I believe, on Twitch under those names as well. We really appreciate it. I'm going to go play some Grand Theft Auto 5 because that's all I've been doing recently. So, Dragon Drop was a pleasure, man. Yep. And we'll nice see you guys back. next time.